All right there, guys, how's it going? So this is another article review. Uh, it's another article that's come out today on The Athletic by David Ornstein and James Pierce. Goes over the whole Alonso situation, and I think at the bottom end as well, there's a few names in there of potential other candidates that Liverpool could be going for and reasons for and against them. So, uh, yeah, I'm not going to read the whole thing because I think there is like a couple of paragraphs that don't really mean anything to us. Um, in relation to what's going on with Alonso. But I think there's a few things in here that kind of... It's like a timeline of events that, that's happened surrounding the whole Alonso to Liverpool thing. And I think it's interesting just to touch on them. So, yeah. So, the article is titled, What happened with Liverpool and Jabby Alonso and where does the club look now? When Liverpool's new sporting director, Richard Hughes, received a phone call from the agent of Alonso this week, it only served to confirm what he had long since expected. Xabi Alonso would be staying at Bayer Leverkusen this summer. News of Alonso committing his future to the Bundesliga club on Friday was a blow for supporters hoping to see the Spaniard hired as Klopp's successor. However, internally at Liverpool, there was sense of little surprise they had started focusing their attention on alternative tar targets. Hughes has a strong relationship with Alonso's agent, having appointed another one of his clients, Ando Areola, as Bournemouth manager in June 2023. They had been dialogue between them, so Liverpool knew where things stood. Which I guess is kind of true. I believe that. Alonso was the clear favourite to take over from Klopp as a result of his work at Leverkusen and his emotional bond with the Liverpool supporters from his playing days under Rafael Benitez. He ticked a lot of the boxes. But he was never offered the job. There was no face-to-face -face discussions. Again, I find that interesting as well, considering we'd kind of heard that Alonso had given the green light to say that he was up for it. Let's see what else it says. When Liverpool initially made contact with Alonso's camp shortly after Klopp's announcement on January the 26th that he intended to step down in May, they were informed that the 42-year-old was concentrating on his job at Leverkusen and was unlikely to be available this summer. The door was not completely closed, but the message was clear. This was not the time to talk. Okay, so I guess that kind of does give them a little bit of hope, doesn't it, in regards to this whole situation? Because it says they're like, the door was not completely closed. Basically, you're just saying he's not ready to talk about it just yet. Mm. Okay. A line of communication was kept open between Alonso's camp and Liverpool as the club was going through an off-field restructuring with Hughes arriving under Michael Edwards who was appointed as owner's FSG Sports Group new football chief executive on March the 12th. Liverpool wanted their leadership team in place before trying to take things any further with Alonso. Touches on Bayern Munich here, we don't need to talk about that. As for Liverpool, Edwards and Hughes wanted to be sure that their intelligence that Alonso would be remaining at Leverkusen was correct. They were keen to be know if it would be worth meeting with him to gauge his thoughts around the Liverpool project. But ultimately, despite suggestions in Germany that a summit with Liverpool was planned for the international break, it never happened. OK, then again, I wasn't. Yeah, that's that makes sense. Mm hmm. It fell to Bayern's honorary president, Uli Hoeneß, to offer the first public indication on Thursday that the game was up. And then it just goes on to the quotes that we already know that Uli Hunis made. I'll go over them again. It would be difficult, if not imp probably impossible, to appoint Alonso. He's more inclined to stay at Bayer Leverkusen in view of their current successes because he would not want to leave them behind. Let's say if he had another two or three years of, of success, it would probably be easier to bring him out of there. Which is true. So why has Alonso... Oh no, we, don't to, we don't need to touch on why he decided to stay. It doesn't really make any difference to us. There's his quotes that we already know about. Uh, those closest to Alonso say that it's perfectly in character, that he's staying there. He's not in a hurry. And will not make, make the next stage of his career. We already know that. We touched on this yesterday. 
Uh, okay, this bit here. There was a school of thought among some staff at Liverpool that if Leverkusen won the Bundesliga, Alonso might decide he could not top that and move on. But the club were never given any false hope by his camp. Yep. I guess I believe that. And then it touches on Klopp's comments yesterday where he kind of said that he understood and could relate to the decision that Alonso made. Um, we'll touch on them quotes now because it's only one paragraph. He just basically, Klopp basically says, based on Alonso, being a young manager at the club doing really well, I had a similar situation. I did pretty much the same thing and never regretted it. He's doing an incredible job there. Leverkusen have a good team and they will probably keep their team together. That's possible this year. Not every year is like that, and I understand why he wants to stay. I guess like, we all kind of come round to the realization that he, um, why he wanted to stay. So, well, so yeah, basically, just to finish this whole Alonso bit off, it does say that there's been no contact between Madrid and Alonso recently, and his decision to stay at Leverkusen for at least one more season is not linked to any interest from the Spanish giants. And then it just says here one other thing that Alonso has been mentioned as a potential successor to Pep Guardiola at Man City also. Can you imagine that one? Like we miss out on Alonso and then he goes to Man City next year or whenever Guardiola decides that he's done. Because, you know, with Klopp going, I won't be surprised if Guardiola's not around much longer, you know. I've, I don't know when his contract runs out. I'm not going to look for it. I'm not really that arse, but... I just wonder if this contract that Guardiola's got now is his last one. Um, so, yeah, I was always of the opinion as well, basically, that if whichever one we didn't get out of Alonso and Amarim, that would end up at City. So, that, you know, it's there still, I guess. Right then. So, this next bit, guys, is all about where do Liverpool turn next. And there's some new names in here that um, I've not heard being spoken about around Liverpool. Right. Senior Anfield figures insist it was never a case of the job simply being Alonso's if he wanted it. They had kept an open mind and wanted to conduct a rigorous process to assess the merits of a host of candidates. That started when Klopp informed the owners of his plans in November and was then stepped up after the manager's public announcement two months later. Uh, skip forward a little bit. Klopp talking about Alonso... Liverpool are now in the process of drawing up a shortlist. Sporting's Ruben Amarim is under serious consideration. The 39-year-old is highly regarded having ended Sporting's 19-year wait for the Portuguese title and fits FSG's profile of what they value in managers. His attacking brand of football is seen as being of a similar style to that established under Klopp. And just quickly on that, that is a, that's true. I have done a little bit of homework. Um, I am going to be doing a Amarim Tactics video, very similar to what I did with Alonso and when we did the change with Trent's position for Liverpool. It's not going to be like stats heavy. It's just going to be like basic, like this is how they line up, this is how they play a little bit. But yeah, I've got a bit of homework done for that. So I'll be, that should be out by tomorrow. Um, Sporting are a point clear of Benfica as they chase another league title under Amarim and his release clause could ultimately be around 10 million euros lower than some figures have previously reported again that's that's another figure that we've heard again yesterday we heard it was 17 from Joyce or the day before from Joyce then we heard it was 12 point summit back in February the 28th I'll have to get the AKM book out to double check that um it was again it was 8.6 million which i think pounds which is a f about 10 million euros if i'm not wrong there they're adamant it's 8.6 million is uh the athletic i wonder where everyone's getting these other numbers from i really do hmm Brighton manager Roberto De Zerbi and German boss Julian Nagelsmann, who both scored well on Liverpool's initial data research, have been discussed. De Zerbi's side have not consistently hit the heights of last season, but there is an appreciation that he lost two best players with the sales of McAllister and Caicedo last summer. However, his outspoken nature and confrontational approach to player recruitment could count against him. Oh, 
yeah, if he's like that, I don't think that FSG would like him being at the club. Nagelsmann, who is coaching Germany at this summer's European Championships, has been out of club football since being sacked by Bayern Munich in March last year. Simone Inzaghi at Inter is regarded as an outsider. The Serie A club could not club do not want to lose him and not being able to speak English would be an issue if he moved to the Premier League. So I guess that rules him out then. Thiago Motta, who has overachieved at Bologna, has been discussed, although he has been linked with a move to Juventus. Mm -hmm. I probably reckon he'd probably go there over us, wouldn't he? Lille manager Paolo Fonseca who is out of contract in the summer, is well regarded and Thomas Tuchel is still available. The German ped has pedigree, having won the Champions League at Chelsea, Bundesliga and league earned titles, although appointing another big name and strong-minded character to follow Klopp would provide its own challenges. So yeah, that'll rule him out as well, wouldn't it? They don't want someone that's going to come in and, uh, and try and this is how I want to do it type thing. Because I think that's why Edwards left in the beginning. You know, when Klopp started winning, winning things and titles and yeah, that ain't happening. Thomas Frank has had his admirers, courtesy of his work at Brentford, whose style of play under the Dane has similarities to Klopp's Liverpool under Klopp. Klopp's Liverpool under Klopp. That's a bit of a Klopp's Liverpool. That's a bit weird, isn't it? Although moving to Anfield would represent a major step up. Yeah, he's, he's not in my way of thinking at all. With two trophies still to play for during the running, Liverpool are unlikely to make any official appointment before the curtain comes down on Klopp's reign. They are wary of causing upheaval to another club during such a pivotal period. Yeah, I get that. Um, behind the scenes, Hughes will know that the clock is ticking as he helps shape the future direction. Didn't think he was uh, working till June the 1st, guys, was he? For now... That future does not involve Alonso. So there you go, guys. That is the article. Seems like Amarim is the out-and-out -out favourite. The touch on a few other names there. Um, just to go over that again, Amarim's number one for me. Deserby wouldn't want him, but if he came in, I would support him. Nagelsmann, a few years ago, I did think that he would be a good replacement for Klopp, but I think... It looks like he's either going to go back to Munich or stay on as the German manager. I guess it depends how they do in the Euros. Simone Inzaghi doesn't speak English, so that's a, a, no, a no starter. Thiago Motta, I reckon he'll be at Juve if he goes anywhere. Paolo Fonseca, I've not really heard about him. Don't know how Lilla are doing, so that may be someone that I look into. So considering he's definitely out of the contract in the summer. And Tuchel's a no-go as well, as is Thomas Frank. So... Yeah, I reckon again, guys, that this is probably Amarim's to lose. So let's wait and see what happens, guys. But as they say there, it doesn't look likely that we will see any sort of progress on this until the, the back end of the season. So right then, guys, that's that uh, article reviewed for you. Let me know down in the comments below what you think on all of that. And um, I, the next video I do should be the, the Ruben Amarim tactics video. So I hope you, you find that interesting as well. Right then, guys, have a good weekend. And I'll see you in the next one.